Hi, everyone. I'm Johnny Alexander, and I'm so happy to be here and to welcome you to another episode of Writer's Chat. I'm joined by Melissa Stroh and Brandy Bro, my wonderful and lovely co-host. And right now I'm going to turn it over to Brandy so she can introduce our very special guest for today. Hi, we have back with us C. Hope Clark, and she is going to talk with us today about crowdfunding. Let me tell you a little bit first about Hope. C. Hope Clark is founder of FundsForWriters.com, a website designated by Writers Digest for its 101 best websites for writers for 21 consecutive years. That is very impressive. <laughs> the site's free weekly newsletter contains contests, grants, markets, and publishers and agents reaching 23,000 writers. That's a lot of writers, folks. Lots and lots of people. She's published in Writers Digest. The Writer, Writer's Market, The Right Life, Make a Living Writing, Writer's Magazine UK, Guide to Literary Agents, SC Wildlife, and more. She presents virtual writing classes and a monthly blog on freelancing under the Writer's Digest umbrella. She also pens mysteries and is an award-winning author of three series totaling 15 novels, the most popular being the Adisto Island Mysteries. Her latest novel, Adisto Heat, released May 31st. She is under contract for several more, and you can find her at www.chopeclark.com or fundsforwriters.com. Thank you so much for coming back and sharing with us today, Hope. We're really excited. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Let's see if we can see if I can share a screen. Here we go. Okay. And while you share, I'm going to go off camera. So there's more focus on you. Yeah, me too. <laughs> there we go. Everybody see that okay? Yes. Yes, I do. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, crowdfunding. I... It's funny, I don't get a lot of requests to explain crowdfunding, but I think it's because it's it's a little um, fuzzy to a lot of people. And it also involves a, a little bit of a financial mind. And, and I don't know how many people go, uh, if it's too complicated, I don't wanna fool with it. <laughs> but um, crowdfunding has been around for decades and decades and decades. It really has. It's just in the last, oh, I'd say 15 or so years turned into uh, something that you can publish with. But it's still not, those that use it well do very well with it. And then you'll see some that will try it and not do well with it. But honestly, I believe that's because they're they're scared of it and not real sure of it and don't throw their heart into it so i'm going to try and simplify it a little bit for you and if you want to stop me at any time and talk about the details or you don't understand something that's on the screen please let me know and and i i believe in taking questions as you go okay we will we'll do that and we'll monitor the chat too to help with that as well okay good thank you mm -hmm. um crowdfunding and a lot of people don't even know what it is. And it's just, it's exactly what it sounds like. You're using a lot of people to fund whatever project you've got going on. And it's nothing more than collecting money from a lot of people. So uh, a lot of folks will say, why can't I get a grant instead? Well, grants are a lot more particular. You've got to find one that fits your project and then apply to them and be vetted. And there's normally not enough money to go around. And I will tell you, there are very few grants that exceed more than one, two, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000. There's a handful, but as a result, they're highly competitive. And if you are writing commercial fiction, it's even more difficult because most of the time literary grants tend to lean toward literary fiction and poetry and screenwriting and those types of things. So when somebody tells me I need a grant to write, I will explain to them how grants work, but then turn around and go, have you considered crowdfunding? 
because you have got a lot more control with crowdfunding, not to mention the sky's the limit into how much money you can ask for. So let's see if I can break it down and explain it to you a little bit. Uh, uh, crowdfunding has got a lot of names because like I said, it's been around for a long time. Uh, these, these people that you're asking money from, um, they are your financers, they're your sponsors, they're your subsidizers, they're your capitalizers. Uh, they can become stakeholders if you like, but you're asking a lot of people out there to support you and fund your project. Now there are three types of crowdfunding and one is reward-based where you're pre-selling a product and you probably have little other little gadgets and gimmies and swag and stuff that goes with it as well. That tends to be the predominant type of crowdfunding when it comes to publishing. There's an equity base where you actually purchase shares of a product. I have known an author to literally sell shares of their royalties in order to get financing to self-publish a book. Of course, as you could probably guess, it's gonna depend on what type of book you've got and that probably lends itself more toward nonfiction would be my guess. Um, the person I knew did nonfiction. And then there's a charity base where you, you're just simply asking for donations. And I will explain to you why that's usually not the way to go. What has been successfully crowdfunded? As you can see, there's, there's books, there's entire publishing companies. You've got authors that have decided to establish themselves as a publishing company, and they use crowdfunding to get the funds to publish the books they want in, in their inventory. Uh, literary magazines, literary journals, uh, music has been crowdfunding a long time. You can even do journalism. Uh, as you can see, movies, concerts, research, there's even been real estate sold via crowdfunding. So, you know, it kind of gives you an idea. It's a way of doing business that the average person is not aware of. Uh, why do it? I mean, besides the money, <laughs> yeah, everybody's looking for money, especially if you're self-publishing. Uh, you need that startup money. You need that promotional money, that marketing money. Uh, so it's to get your startup funds, but crowdfunding is way more than about the money. It's about building platform because there's such an art to creating a crowdfunding campaign that you've got to think about that audience and build a following in order to have a successful campaign because you're asking a lot of people for money. Well, in turn, that also means you're developing followers for your product in this case, usually books. So it's twofold. With a grant, you get money to do whatever you need to do, you're done. With crowdfunding, at the same time, you're building a following. And those people usually stick with you. If anybody donates a dollar to you, they're gonna follow, follow up to see what you've done with their dollar. So it's, it can also be used, and you don't necessarily know that it's being used this way, but it can be used for beta testing or to get feedback as to whether whatever you're thinking about doing has any merit to it. So you may be thinking about, uh, let's just say a children's book and maybe you're not a children's book author, but so you wanna kind of test the water. So you create a crowdfunding campaign and promote it to see if you get the backing for it. And if it doesn't do well, then that may help you decide that maybe you're not a children's author. So a lot of people use it for beta testing to see if the interest is out there. But I do wanna emphasize this, it's not just asking for money. Unless you are doing this for a charitable cause, then you are not doing this just for the money. You want backers, you want um, people that support you that love what you're doing, they love who you are and how you're doing it. It is literally a campaign. It's not just publishing a book. Uh, each platform, and you can crowdfund under a lot of different platforms. 
I mean, you can try to do it on your own if you want, but I suggest you not. There's just so many platforms out there for you to use to set up these campaigns, and they've got mechanisms in place to help streamline it for you. They can take the money for you. They can keep up with it for you. Uh, they keep up with you know, your, your time frame and how, what your percentage of how far you are from your goal. They can offer you email services or a blogging site. They can provide you with a, a place to park your campaign and work it. So my, I strongly suggest you use an existing crowdfunding campaign. Kickstarter is the most familiar, but you've got to learn the, the rules of each and every one, and each is different. They're basically the same, but when you get down into the little details and the nitty gritty, some will say we can do this and we cannot do that. For instance, Kickstarter will not allow equity projects. Say you want to sell shares in your trilogy that you're, you're developing, and you want to have these backers own a piece of the royalty and do it that way. Kickstarter refuses to do equity projects. So, you know, it's, it's things like that. Um, they have little rules I put in there. They've got little rules like there can't be alcohol involved. There can't be live animals involved. You know, over the years, they've learned what to do and what not to do, <laughs> sometimes rather painfully. So, um, you know, read all the fine print when, you, when you're scouting out which platform to use. Now, crowdfunding is, yes, a project. You're going to decide what project you're wanting to collect funds for. It's not just collecting money for me, the author, to continue my career. It, you have to be fairly specific. So you want to say specifically you are doing this book or this trilogy or whatever it happens to be. Um, crowdfunding is a campaign. It is not just funds for the book. Like I said, you're looking for followers, but to do that, you're enticing these followers. And I'll go into a little more detail as to what that entails. Crowdfunding is also a goal. People are watching you as if you are um, on display as to how well you're doing this. And they want to feel part of something very tangible. So your goal has to be pretty doggone clear as to what you're trying to do. And there's a, usually a time frame involved. You've got 30 days, 45 days, 60 days, whatever you set it up to be to make or break this campaign. And crowdfunding can be a cause. Some people will try to insert in there, 1% of our funds are going to a particular animal shelter, or, or especially if you're doing a children's book about animals. It's sometimes it can be a pure cause. It can be a, um, a disabled veteran that is trying to write and publish his or her story. So it's, you can have causes woven in here as well. And of course the purpose is to entice these people to want to um, follow you, endorse you, um, purchase from you. You are building supporters. You're building this sea of supporters. Now, in terms of uh, campaigns, I mean platforms, the number one, like I said, is Kickstarter. It is the big one. It's been around for quite a while, but it seems to have grown. Uh, the, what Kickstarter is known for is that it has an entire separate publishing section that has been quite successful. And you can actually sign up for newsletters on Kickstarter and follow different campaigns. So if you go through and you're researching Kickstarter and it says sign up for our newsletter, by all means do it because you can watch how people are promoting their campaigns and get a feel for it. I, I got to be a, a Kickstarter junkie for a while and I was following chocolate making, I was following farming, I was following all types of things uh, because I liked endorsing some of these little projects and sometimes it was no more than $10. And sometimes I think one was $25 and you got a collection of their chocolate when it was released. And yeah, you know, it's just little fun stuff like that. But Kickstarter is, is the granddaddy. Um, 
Indiegogo is probably next in size. And I'm doing ones that are prim primarily for publishing or anything literary related. Indiegogo is probably next in line and it has a lot of successful campaigns. So take a look of it at it as in all of these, go in, look for books, publishing, literary, whatever they call it, and just start following the campaigns. Uh, you, you, can, you can go down that rabbit hole for hours looking to and get so many ideas before you even develop a campaign of your own. Um, even if you think you know what you want to do, you can follow these other campaigns and get all kinds of new ideas. Um, Unbound.com is pretty cool and it's a little bit different. I know people who have successfully done Unbound.com. It is also a publisher and they do a 50-50 split with you. They will publish you, but what they do is you literally pitch to them and they tell you how to pitch and they look at whether or not they think it's going to be um, a fairly successful program and then they turn around and help you build your campaign for crowdfunding. And once you get a certain number of people who commit to crowdfund your project, you're approved for publication. So you can have the whole ball of wax just right there. It's headquartered in the UK. They used to not take anyone outside the UK, now they're international. But they hold your hand and they groom you through it. I'm amazed at how few people check out Unbound and go immediately to Kickstarter. I think Unbound is a pretty cool situation because that is all they do is publish books. Now there's smaller, uh, lesser known platforms that you can, you can do. They function the same as these others. And I, you know, crowdfunder.co.uk, fundraiser, crowdfunder, fundraiser and crowdfunder are sisters. And uh, crowdfunder tends to be a little more slanted toward the creator, whether it's art, it's dance, it's graphics, it's writing. Uh, not to say you can't use fundraiser as well, but those three are international in, um, in terms of reach. Now you've got other crowdfunding platforms, say you're not doing a book, say you're a journalist or you write shorts or you write poetry, um, you wanna do podcasts, you just wanna do blog posts, whatever it is, you tend to write different things and you've got a, a certain quantity of it. Maybe you want backers to support your writing. Okay, what you're doing is actually getting subscribers for, for lack of a better word. You've got people that become your followers and they offer a monthly fee to get unique material from you. And you can actually have different levels. You could have, um, you could have a free group, you could have a dollar a month, a $5 a month, $10 a month, whatever you choose. And you wound up building a, an income, a monthly income from this. Now, there have been some people who have gone full time as a result of their Patreon account, where they're providing unique short stories. I'll give you an example, you can be a novelist. I could, I've got 15 books out, I got a 16th one about to come out again. I could turn around and write short stories that are only available to my supporters on Patreon. And they might pay a dollar or two, five, 10, whatever a month. And I would promise them a story a week, story a month, however I wanted to do it, so that they are an exclusive group of people that get to read unique material. I could even take my characters in a series and create short stories or little side adventures just for that fan base. So it's got a lot of potential to it. You can be a journalist. You could, you could be you know, an expert in food writing, in animal writing, it doesn't matter what it is, you can build a following there where you're giving expert advice or new ideas, new, you know, whatever, just to that exclusive group of people that, and they pay for that service. Um, Patreon is like Kickstarter. 
in that regard. It's huge and it does quite well. Joanna Penn has a Patreon account. I actually subscribe to a Patreon account, $5 a month, where there's a lady who provides all types of writing opportunities that I don't see anywhere else. And I scout a lot of areas for funds for writers. And she just loves doing this. And this is all she does is look for these unique um, openings, calls for submissions. Some of them are only 30 days open or some of them are by the end of the month. You know, they're short lived. And some of them are just, hey, there's a new magazine. Here's their new guidelines. But it's things that I would have to dig and spend so much time finding. Instead, I pay her $5 a month and I've got this separate Amount, amount of opportunity here that I can sift through so much quicker to see what might fit in funds for writers. So it's Patreon can, there's so much potential there if you want somebody to support whatever you're doing. I, I could do funds for writers on Patreon if I wanted to, if I wanted to provide exclusive, unique material and guidelines on grants or you know, the backdoor sneaky ways of you know, getting into a contest or, or getting into certain magazines. It's a good place for it. The others that you see, coffee.com, buymeacoffee.com, subscribestar.com, memberful.com. You're, you are doing, in a smaller way, you're getting people to pay you for your material. I have, I have seen buy me a coffee on a lot of sites and you may have already your own blog, your own podcast, your own website. And at the end of your articles that you've got on there, I could do this for funds for writers and I still might. You get to the end of the article and if you like this and you've got a little button to coffee.com or buymeacoffee.com and it's, you know, if you like this, thank me with a, cup of coffee kind of thing. And basically you're saying, hey, $5. Uh, so it, it helps you monetize your shorter material. So as you can see, you've got the big crowdfunding platforms and then you've got international and you've got Patreon size. And then you've got these little bitty things that you can use in bits and spurts in what you're already doing. Uh, does anybody have any questions about that before I get into a little more technical? We did have one question. Um, okay. PMS, if an author isn't sure their book idea is a good one, would it be best to go through a place like unbound.com where they're going to get that feedback? <laughs> well, the first thing Unbound's going to do is look at your synopsis to see if they want to fool with you. Mm. So, uh, I mean, if that's the kind of feedback you want, but if you're trying to see if an idea is a good one, you're going to have to flesh it out into a, a campaign, not just a thought of a, mm -hmm. you know, a whimsical idea. You need to, you know, have a synopsis. You need to be able to, and you're going to have to have some visuals, but you're, it's where you have a pretty good idea for a book. And you want to test drive it out there, but you you got to do more than just say, hey, I have an idea. So pretty much a, a full proposal like you would for an agent or a publisher. Well, it's not a publisher, a traditional publisher. You got to go to that degree, but yes. Right, right. That just seems like such a fascinating um, business model, the, the unbound.com. I hadn't heard of it before. So that that is very interesting to see that that's how they do it. Um, uh, I've, and it's, it's work. What I like about Unbound is that they help you through it. They mm -hmm. tell you, okay, right now you, you need to be doing this. And mm -hmm. right now you need to be doing that. So that I, I kind of like them for that. Okay. Um, note the one missing and I, it, and it's GoFundMe.com mm -hmm. and everybody's heard of GoFundMe. Uh, you hear about it for all types of projects, but you, it's normally people raising money for a cause or a problem or an issue. I've seen it used for medical, for housing, um, political reasons. I've seen it used for a lot of things where it's, I'm having a hard time, I need money. 
And the biggest mistake you can do is try to crowdfund on GoFundMe when all these projects around you are desperate for money. It mm. makes you look desperate. Mm. So I am very quick. You know, GoFundMe may tell you otherwise. I'm very quick to tell you don't use them. Uh, they're, they're just not made for publishing. They're, they're more for individual circumstances, um, not for the creator. Uh, so I have a they've question. They've had a lot of bad press of late. They've had a lot of bad press lately. Brandy, so there's a, yeah, there's a lot of applications that you can use these different sites for. Um, is it smart to stick with one or should you use say Patreon for subscribers and then if you're doing small little things use buy me a coffee um, or is it not wise to scatter your funding no, across a couple different platforms people do it all the time and okay. people have used Kickstarter and not done well and then flipped over and did the same thing on Indiegogo based on what they learned from Kickstarter because they didn't okay. want to you know you know mm -hmm. they've already been splashed on Kickstarter and and you your campaign stays up there for a little while so maybe you want to turn around and tweak it and you've learned from it and throw it up on indiegogo and i'll explain to you in a minute as to why you might want to do that as as well and of course you know buy me a coffee is good anywhere you mm -hmm. can you know and and coffee.com and patreon is just a different animal so sure you could use three four five of these different things okay I thought so, but I'm like, I was wondering, maybe it's just me. I like to segment things out sometimes. So <laughs> thanks. Now, how much does it cost you? You know, there's got to be a charge. And I start with Kickstarter since it's the most popular. But it tends to be an all or nothing situation. In my previous life, before my writing, um, I was with the federal government and I was in lending and grants. Um, I fully appreciate Kickstarter in its all or nothing mentality. In other words, you set a goal, you put your campaign out there, say you're trying to raise $5,000 to self-publish a book. And let's say you only get $4,420. You get none of it. It's an all or nothing proposition. So you have to get your 5,000 or the project. They don't call it a failure, but it is not funded. Okay, if it is funded, then you see the fees. And, and normally it's, a lot of them are pretty close. There's close to a three to 5% fee and then the cost of them processing people's credit cards. You know, that's, that's basically it. But the reason they are all or nothing, and I can understand this having previously been a lender, is that if somebody gets less than what they need, there's a higher chance of failure. So that's the that's what they build on is you be very careful in what you want to ask for. And you put it on the low side of what you absolutely have to have so that you have a higher chance of your of success. Now, if your project you're asking for 5000 and it winds up being 12,000 more power to you, you get it all. So that's the reason I say don't overestimate you're better to just squeak it you know crunch those numbers to know just the absolute minimum you have to have to be successful so that you have a better chance of winning um, indiegogo you get whatever is pledged so using the same example if you need five thousand and only three thousand is pledged you get the three thousand now, whether you can make your project work on 3,000, you know, you're gonna have all these followers watching you because you've made promises to see whether or not you're gonna do it. So, you know, that's the catch kind of there. And that's the reason Kickstarter actually does so well. You will have people do Kickstarter and not have a successful campaign and slip down and then do Indiegogo. Going, ah, oh, I should have done this, I should have done that. They'll flip into Indiegogo. Um, Unbound operates on royalties. So that's a whole different type of campaign there. They, they get paid based on royalties of the books that are sold. 
Uh, crowd funder is 5% plus the credit card fees. Yeah, you keep on going down there and you, you see it's pretty much the same. Patreon, you get choices. You know, and you know, 5%, 8% or 12% of your income plus the transaction fees of the credit cards. And you might wonder what's the difference? It's, it's what Patreon can do for you and the tools that they give you on your Patreon page that makes the difference. And that 12% comes with a lot of perks. They're gonna help you be more successful when you're at that higher level. At the lower level, they're gonna give you the bare minimum and say, you know, you're kind of on your own. So you, you gotta look at all those details and what they offer in between. Um, and then the little ones, you know, coffee, buy me a coffee, transaction fees. That's, that's where they're making their money. Um, a lot of these will come with a subscriber newsletter uh, tool attached to it so that you're not doing your own or relying on just your own. You can actually be in the Patreon system or the Kickstarter system and they provide you a tool to help communicate with all of these followers. So they're not having to bounce from your website to here to Kickstarter, you know, because we all know the more somebody has to click, the less likely you're gonna hold on to them. So they're, they're smart. These people know what they're doing. Um, now on a Kickstarter or any other crowdfunding program, and I'll just talk books right now, you're gonna, you got a book project, whatever it is, when somebody donates to you, you're gonna have these different tiers as to what they receive as a reward for depending on how much they donate. And the sky's the limit on all these different types of donations. And that's another reason you wanna look at all the successful and unsuccessful projects out there to see what did they do. Um, but you give them, uh, you know, free goodies. I told you the one that sent out free chocolate. Uh, any kind of free services. Maybe you're a coach. You know, maybe you're an artist. Free books. You know, you're trying to publish. Is this free ebook? Could be one level. Uh, uh, free paperback, another level. Free hardback. Of course, everything's autographed. Audio. Um, you could have 16 books for your book club. I just there's just so much. Uh, subscriptions. You could give them free subscriptions to something. Um, you could give them early access to your work before it's published. You know, and Patreon lives off of that. You can give them very exclusive access to things that will never be public. And then you can also say, we'll donate so much of your donation to whatever charity you happen to be endorsing at the time. So there's all types of little angles for the tiers of rewards. And in basic crowdfunding, you do need to come up with those tiers. And the more, the better, because people need options. They don't need to feel like they can donate one or $25. They need to have the one, the five, the 10, the 25. And then again, you need that thousand dollar baby down there too for somebody out there who just may have all this money in the world to spend. Uh, the art to book crowdfunding. I've given you a lot of things here. Your project is going to have to be solid. It needs to be attractive and succinctly explained. To just say you're working on a fantasy series and you know title yet unknown and you hope to do three books in the series, but it could be five, you're done. You're just totally done. There's so people want solid concrete projects. They want to know what they're what they're paying for and what they're getting behind. So as a result, have an array of one liners to make the idea stick in somebody's head. So you, you know, your your title and then the log line. You know, we, we get preached that all the time, the elevator line and the log line and the tag line. Um, you ought to be living, walking, talking these one-liners during this campaign. Also, um, you need to know your audience because you're not just gonna get on crowdfunding, throw your campaign up 
and expect people to flock to it. There's a certain degree, certain number of people that do, I don't want to say troll. They, um, I mean, they scout crowdfunding sites just for the pleasure of it in hopes to get behind some creative genius out there. Um, so when I say that, that means you're going to have to scout for people to direct to your crowdfunding site. And we'll talk a little more about that. Your project has to appear highly creative. Okay, you need somebody to look at that and go, oh, I like that idea. It's something they haven't thought of. It can't be yet another poetry book, yet another fantasy story. What's different about it? And this, at this point, it makes people shy away from crowdfunding. However, to me, crowdfunding makes you put the energy in your project you should have behind it anyway. Otherwise, it's not going to be successful whether you crowdfund or not. You know, you need all of this whether you crowdfund or not. This is just putting energy and full creativity into whatever you're doing. It has to feel unique. People need to feel like they're buying into something that other people don't have the chance to buy into. Now, regardless what you're doing, there's gonna to have to be visuals. People are visual animals. So number one, cover. Even if, it, even if you're beta, beta testing, you gonna, you're gonna need a cover. Something that's gonna be uh, attractive as if this is gonna be the tangible book, you know, if, if this all works out. Um, you can have, graphics, um, memes. You can do a video interview with the author. You know, you can be interviewed as to what you're doing and the passion behind it. Or if you're doing a children's book, show children reading your, you know, what your book in progress. Or if it's about animals, you know, you just get creative on a, on a visual trailer or an interview. Or you can even provide some little educational snippet that proves you are the expert you claim to be. You can have an emotional backstory of some time. What drove you to this point? And uh, you know, you just need um, something to grab people by the lapels and pull them in. I endorsed one one time, and this little girl was gosh, 21 years old. And she had tried to publish early, too early, out of high school. And it didn't work. And then she traveled with her friend cross country and decided she wasn't going to go to college. And they traveled cross, cross country. And she was going to research a book. Well, it turned out the trip itself became a story and assumed a life of its own. So it became not necessarily a Thelma and Louise type of thing, but it, in other words, it, they learned so much about friendship and, and meeting people in strange places that she totaled it in about face and decided to write this book and had written several chapters of it. She had studied self-publishing and of course failed at it the first go around and she knew better. And she even said, I failed the first go around. And I've had this revelation for this new idea. Here's the cover. I'm funding the editor to make sure I've got this right. Um, the graphic designer. And she was going down in detail what she was going to do and why. And you could feel the energy that she'd had this revelation for this human interest story. And uh, I endorsed it. You know, I, I, I bought one of her tears and followed her and actually turned around and said, write a story for me for Funds for Writers. And she did. And I knew in doing so at the bottom of it, I put her Kickstarter campaign down there so that others would, would contribute as well. I'm, I'm big on crowdfunding. If I see a good crowdfunding publishing story, I'll put it in Funds for Writers. Um, the gentleman that I did uh, who published with Unbound actually did a three-part series for me on how to publish with Unbound and Funds for Writers. So not only did he get some promo from it,
but I paid him for the three articles and it, it just, it was just a nice package. And my readers got to learn how Unbound works. But visuals, you can't have enough of them. And when you look at the successful stories and campaigns out there, you'll see the examples that, that you can use. Um, you need to feel transparent and not commercial because this is crowdfunding. This is an individual that's coming out here and bearing their soul for this project. And you, people need to feel like there's almost a camaraderie or a friendship involved. It's almost like I, I'm getting an inside glimpse as to what makes this person tick. So that's the feel you get with a crowdfunding campaign. And the more you can tap that, the better. Your use of funds needs to be extremely clear, very clear. Not saying you need to put your spreadsheet up there for people to see it down to the pennies, but if you're asking for 5,000, what's it gonna be used for? You know, what are the three, four, five main things you're gonna use it for? I will tell you right now, a big turnoff is living expenses because that just looks like you're trying to earn money to live. The creativity just kind of drains out of it. It leaches out of it. The energy needs to be behind the project. So you need to have all of this money going into the project. Now you may have a trip involved to research the project and that's, you know, that's fine, but you don't want it to look like you're just putting money in your pocket. Uh, that's the quickest way to lose a grant too. Uh, it has to feel like it has high odds for success. When you put all this package together, it, 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 will, it will feel that way. You can, you can use your past experience to show you kind of know what you're doing uh, or that you're clever because you've come up with something so unique. Or you can show you are an expert. You've done all this research or you have the education, whatever it is, to claim you are the expert, the person to do the best job for this book. So, you know, from whatever angle, it needs to feel like you know what you're doing. Um, make sure that your, your rewards, your gifts, your services, whatever you want to call your tiers, uh, are attractive. There's something someone wants, and they're not just thrown up there as afterthoughts. Oh, I'll give you a free ebook. Oh, I'll give you a free ebook and a bookmark. Oh, I'll give you a free, <laughs> if, you, if you, you know, catch my drift. It needs to feel like you've put a lot of thought into it. And it is a thank you to that sponsor. Uh, this is the next thing is what kills a lot of projects is that they don't maintain it. Once your campaign goes live, you need to work it. That means on your social media, your friends' social media, podcasts, blogs, wherever you have a reach or can grab a reach, you keep it going. Within your campaign, you have the ability to, to keep a dialogue going on it in most of these platforms, and you want to be there. If somebody asks a question or somebody wants to congratulate you, whatever, you want to be there and be able to to talk it, or you want to be able to give updates. Oh, hey, we met our first goal of a thousand dollars. As a result, we're going to now go for two thousand, and this is what we plan to do with it. Thanks everyone for being so generous. We're just getting more and more successful. That's energizing it, and people love that. Um, let's see, promote often, live stream. People like to see who you are. YouTube, whatever. There's just so many tools out there right now. Stay active. You're creating a world others want to join. It's, you know, it's the reason advertising executives make so much money. <laughs> okay. Give you an example. And this may help drive some of it home. Under Crowdfunder, and that's one of the smaller ones, smaller platforms. Um, Field Mouse Press is a literary magazine, and it's nothing huge, it's nothing exceptional, and this is an active campaign I just pulled down yesterday. They have raised $13,846. They had a 19,500, 19,500 goal. 
Uh, and it shows you they've had so many contributors, they've been active for 54 days. And you can see they got that little tally going across there showing you how far they are they are. And if you go to that site, you will see they've got trailers, they've got artwork, and they're they're exposing themselves and showing you this is who we are, this is what we hope to do. What they're doing is they are funding their next quarterly issue. You will see literary magazines and authors that will come back time after time after time with crowdfunding to fund the next magazine, the next season, the next quarter, the next book, the next trilogy. You have some people that come back to crowdfunding over and over again and keep tapping those same followers to fund project after project after project. And of course they get better with every project. Uh, this is not Fieldhouse Press's first project. Uh, Unbound.com, I just got two links there, but this is the gentleman I know that funded his book and who wrote three articles for me to explain how he did it and how he went through the process. I've got that link there to my website so you can follow all three of those articles as well as the link to his book, which is called Work in Progress. Um, so you get to see both sides of it. He's a pretty cool guy. Uh, Kickstarter. This, this is the biggest campaign Kickstarter has ever done. And it was huge. As it was growing, I was watching it go from its bare minimum, which he had a pretty, pretty strong, they're not showing what it was to start with. There we go, a million dollar goal. Okay, this guy is already is already well published. And he was creating, get this, I love the drama, four secret novels. Okay, he already had a, had a following. Well, now he's got four secret novels. And what he did as time went on, he would show a little bit more as to what these novels were about, or novel one, or novel two. And he'll just drop hints. And he was baiting people and just reeling them in. He wound up with $41 million from this project. It was an incredible campaign. And when you go to the site, you will see just the business savvy in this man and what he did. He wound up, I read a post that he wrote after he was successful on this campaign. And he wound up with so much money coming in, he had to expand his project. He had so many different tiers of products to give to people as thanks. He had to hire staff. So he had to rent a warehouse because when you're self-publishing novels to this level, you've got to be able to store. And so he literally had to expand into a much larger business because of his success on crowdfunding. And I've seen that, not to this degree, but I've seen that happen where somebody thought they wanted $5,000, wound up with 25. And then you got all these followers out there who donated going, okay, let's see, what are you gonna do with the extra $20,000? And you've got to have backup plans. What if you fall short? What if it doubles? What if it quadruples? You've got to have these things in the back of your head to be prepared for the success or failure of your campaign. Because having a lot of money can be just as difficult as not having enough. But he went, he didn't just have pledges down the side. As um, you can see a couple of them. He was promising people unique material. You would get a one-time, um, piece of original work or you become a subscriber to a monthly exclusive group or a quarterly. Um, you got boxes of swag that he put together that might have t-shirts and things in it. Um, he did gradual unveilings a little and along and along just like I said just reeling people in and everybody became labeled as the insiders once they reach a certain level and they were the only ones that were going to get certain material. Uh, he used YouTube to 
reveal these novels, so he put himself up there. Uh, he even did collectibles for his books, hardcover collectibles. Once he reached a certain point, he knew he was going to get the money. Okay, we're going to do these special, you know, only 1,000 of these books in existence, and this is what they're going to have in them, and who's autographed them, and I mean, he just got more and more creative. And something else he did is when you checked out, so you say you're going to pledge at tier number three, and you go in, put your charge card in, and you know what you're going to get. Well, you get there, and he goes, you know, for $5 more, you can add on one of these or add on one of those. He had add-ons at the checkout, which was brilliant, just, just so smart. So that is the cream of the crop right there. And that's the reason I wanted to put it there so you can see everything that can possibly be done. Um, and this is a Kickstarter project. And you may have even heard about this book. This book did so well, but Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls. And it was a hundred tales about real women who were successful for that little girls could look up to. And it was sports figures and it was politicians and it was scientists and artists and writers. It was just all types. And they needed funding to pay the artist and for distrib distribution because of the, a lot of these were hardback. And like a pledge of $12 and you got a coloring book. You know, that, that's kind of cool. They used a ton of visuals. They had um, trailers. And of course, because it is somewhat of a picture book, it just was all types of artistic work on there. They donated books to charity. They actually had homeschooling kits for how to teach the theme behind this book to your child at home. They had temporary tattoos, which every kid loves. Uh, all types of books from ebook to print to hardback to audio. You could be in their hall of fame in their book if you donated a certain, up to a certain level. Um, they even did mobile apps before it was over with. And then of course, if you really paid high up, you could have a meeting with the creators. I've seen authors offer to do Zoom meetings with book clubs or individuals uh, you donated enough, they would fly to you. Hope, there's a bunch of perks. I'm wondering, do you have to send them directly from your house? So like if you have a bunch of crowdfunders and they get coloring books, for example, as a perk, do you then have to ship out the coloring book? Yes, or, you do. I mean, how does that work? Yes, okay. you do. That is your business. And now, of course, like Brandon Sanford did, uh, Anderson did, he hired people. He used part of his crowdfunding money to hire people because he was at that level. Okay, that explains him hiring other people and why he would do that. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, the advantages of crowdfunding versus just putting your book on Amazon, okay? It is still a direct sale platform you are, you can, just like when you self-publish, you can sell through whatever platform you use to publish your books, whether it's Book Baby or whatever you chose. Um, but as you all know, for an autograph book, you sell it out of your house. Crowdfunding is a direct sale platform without the Amazon fee. You're trying to sell books there. You're not trying to send people to Amazon. So that's one perk of crowdfunding that people forget about. And on Amazon, you've got one book up there. You might have a box set, but on crowdfunding, you're getting sponsors who are paying more than the cost of a book. On Amazon, they're just paying for the book. On crowdfunding, they're paying for book and whatever perks, and you can bundle you can get so creative on this so that instead of somebody just paying $7.99 for an ebook, they're paying $12 to get the ebook and the autograph bookmark and whatever else you're throwing in there. You can, you can just do so much more with it. You're not just selling a book. 
um, I've got long reader and it's lone reader. On Amazon, you're selling one book to a lone reader. On crowdfunding, you're selling to all different kinds of readers, okay? You're getting the casual reader who may do a lower tier. You get the avid, ardent reader who's like, oh, I love this author. This is my favorite author. I'm going to go to tier 12. And they pay for that feeling accordingly. You know, Amazon, a book's a book's a book. The price is the price is the price. So you're tapping into emotion and feeling on, on crowdfunding. Um, also, you can sell more than books. You can, you can add services and appearances and course, courses. Um, you saw the tattoos, uh, souvenirs of all types. Um, I will say people who tend to do, need more graphics in a book or want to do hardback in a book are better off leaning toward crowdfunding than they are um, doing, I'm trying to explain this. Um, the better the quality of the book, as you know, when you self-publish a book that's got a lot of graphics or hardback, it's extremely expensive. Okay, rather than just raise money to print those, you're raising money through crowdfunding that's gonna help increase what you're getting and better enable you to pay for those more expensive services. Of course, with Unbound, you know, they're gonna handle that. Print sells best for obvious reasons. It's tangible. You know, you can put your hands on it, people get it in the mail. And once someone follows you on one campaign, if you decide to go back again, they're notified you have another campaign. So you don't lose those people. So warnings on the places that you can flop in crowdfunding is not factoring in enough fees. You've got to factor in your dollar figures, how much it's going to cost for those credit card fees, you know, postage all of that type of thing. Factor in the shipping. Is it gonna be just in the United States? Are you gonna allow Canada? Are you gonna allow Europe? Are you gonna allow Australia? I just mailed a book to Canada that cost me in postage more than the cost of the book. So you gotta be very clear in your campaign where you're willing to ship. Um, Fact, if you're self-publishing, which most of the time you are on these campaigns, you got to factor in the shipping to you from the publisher, not just your $16.95 book. It costs you a dollar postage to get that book to you. So you got to remember that, that in, in there as well. As well. Um, your print book needs to be first and foremost. A lot of people will back away if you're promoting ebook first. So you want to promote the tangible uh, harder. Your brand and your theme needs to just dance on the page. It needs to be so clear, so succinct, the graphic great, the thought behind it savvy. Just make sure whatever brand theme and title is good so that it sticks in someone's mind. You want to crowdfund and release this book before it's released on Amazon. Because that is the, you know, the get it before it's out, the pre-release kind of thing. You're, these people are, are paying for the privilege of getting it early or getting something that won't even appear on Amazon when something else appears on Amazon. You see, you see what I mean? You're, you're baiting that. Um, be careful of your swag and whatever an, uh, items you're going to add into these tiers as gifts. Coffee cups and t-shirts sound great, but you better have the budget for it because they have a very low profit margin. Not to mention the postage. Uh, make sure you have all your rights. You know, if, if you paid somebody to design your cover, make sure you've got the rights to put that on bookmarks, t-shirts, coffee cups, posters, wherever you want to put it, because that's a different set of rights. And 
the very successful usually have the manuscript ready for printing by the time the campaign is going on so that the fulfillment of the orders doesn't go on for months and months. If you wanna lose followers for any subsequent campaign, that's a quick way to do it. If you're, yeah, you can try to beta test a project. I would have a lot of it written. I wouldn't just beta test an idea. I'd have a manuscripts, um, if not totally written, mostly written because you don't need to be taking six months to fulfill all of your pledges. And like I've said over and over, um, study the successful campaigns. You, that's the best way. I don't care how many, how to do Kickstarter books that are out there. The best way to learn is seeing who is successful at it. At the same time, look at the unsuccessful and see what they don't have or where they went wrong. What turns you off when you read their, pro, read their campaign and just compare. Um, make sure you've picked the crowdfunding tool that you love and set up a page on your website so that anybody who already follows you will follow you over to your crowdfunding campaign. Um, there's a recent book that is out, Kickstart Your Novel, that uh, I have studied that's pretty doggone good. Um, I, if you're, if you're gonna buy a Kickstarter novel, I mean book, to learn how to do Kickstarter, that's written by an author who has done Kickstarter for several campaigns for several of his books. So that's, that's a lot thrown at y'all. <laughs> but any questions now? Oh, that, yes, that was wonderful information. And um, we should have said this early in, but we did put it in the chat that if you want a copy of this handout, all you need to do is to email Hope. And Melissa put her email, put Hope's email in the, um, in the chat so that you can, you can do that. If I find it real quick, I can say it while we're recording too, for those who are listening to the replay and might not have benefit of the chat. Mm -hmm. um, and then if everybody wants to come on while we're doing this too, um, Hope, I'll, I'll ask you to stop sharing your screen and we'll have everyone come on and then uh, any very last minute questions. Oh, let's see if I can stop sharing my screen. <laughs> okay, I am totally, I have scrolled through here twice and I'm totally missing Hope's email which i know melissa put in here so i hope you might it's hope it it's okay. hope at fundsforwriters.com thank you i i actually i do not know what's wrong with my eyes i've gone through this chat three times and i don't, <laughs> don't see it and i know it was there because i read it when she said it there we go all right thank you thank you for doing so, it hey come on everybody hope, are you familiar with um substack I, I have not used it. I know people who do. I really can't talk it. I haven't researched it to tell you the pros and cons. Um, I know a lot of people are changing from medium to Substack. Mm -hmm. So uh, it falls in line with like a subscription type of service. Well, medium is struggling oh. right now. Okay. And um, I, I watch a lot of these things. When I first saw medium, I kind of went, mm, we'll see, we'll see. And it did what I thought it would do. Uh, and Substack seems to be growing and it is the go-to everybody's jumping off to. Yeah. So it, it's, it's doing a lot, a lot better. And I, I really wish I could talk it more, but I can. I had a, a, a couple questions. Um, one is, of course, we saw Brandon Sand Sanderson. I mean, that was just phenomenal, but right. again, he, you know, he had, he was a, already, um, very, very popular author. Um, but it did make me wonder if that genre that he writes, is that sort of, do you find that there are certain genres, I guess, let me put it this way, that draws people to do the crowd, crowdfunding more than other genres? I think it's more in the visuals. I've seen every genre out there. Yeah. Because even if you did say historical fiction, there's so much material you can put out there. Um, 
and good gracious trailers and and videos do wonders if you know how to do those right i don't think it matters which genre now children's books of course you know you, you your market is so big there because it's mm -hmm. it's the parents and grandparents and they want their child to have something no other child has you know so it, yeah yeah they do very well but it's heavy heavy graphics done exceptionally well and you don't want to say hey i'm author so and so and i'm trying to raise money for my the number one thing in trying to raise money is don't say you're raising money <laughs> <laughs> No, because if you start off, uh, you sound desperate. Yeah. And nobody wants a part of that. I, I, I hate to say that, but when I get pitched all the time for funds for writers uh, and people lead off and go, I'm disabled, I'm, and they say, I'm retired, um, I've, I'm out of school, I don't have a job. You just go down the list. And I wrote this in hopes that, and I thought, you killed me on the first line. You know, um, mm -hmm. I, I want your heart and soul to be in what you're sending me. I don't, I don't need to know who you are. I want to know what you can do for me. And that's what, that's the way all of this works. You, yeah. you don't want to see the dollar. Dollars are kind of ugly too <laughs> in, in, in the business world. And you don't want to say you need them, but everybody understands you do. Mm -hmm. You want to just show that you're, you're going to do this project and your heart and soul's in it. And this is where you're going, no matter what. And people want to get on that train, but they they don't want you know. If I collect five thousand dollars, I hope to do it. You're dead. You're just dead. Interesting. I, with, with the visuals, though, too. Like, if um, I'm not sure exactly how to ask this question, but it's kind of occurred to me throughout. Like, if part of your reason for for asking for the money or doing the crowdfunding is to create the cover art for your novel or your trilogy or whatever. What, how do you use other images when you don't yet know what your cover is going to be? Cause that's part of what you're raising money to do. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. And, and that is a catch 22 because yeah, a little you bit. Don't want to look like you're broke coming into this. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's, you might have something that's a a draft mm -hmm. try to you're gonna have to get drafts from somewhere mm -hmm. and even say this is this is the draft or just do characters or oh yeah or you know interview the author or or if it's heavy in setting you know try to think of of all the visuals you could use and you're going to fine tune the cover and the cover can be a, a big reveal later on as part of your campaign. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, if you see your campaign's doing well and you see, Oh, okay. I'm up to $3,500. I can go ahead and get this cover done. That, that, that kind of thing. Yeah. Now it's a catch 22, you know, you know, the old adage of, you know, it takes money to make money. Yes. Um, <laughs> It's, it's hard to start with absolutely zero mm -hmm. unless you're going to start, say, on Patreon or something like that, and you start selling shorts or you're providing unique material and you, you, know, you can start and build up to a book level. If every new writer that contacts me that says, I have this book and I go, oh, I wish you wouldn't start with a book. I just wish you wouldn't. And uh, because there's so much to learn about writing before you do. Mm -hmm. But you can, there's, that's the reason I gave you all those different levels and types of crowdfunding, because if you can't do this big gangbuster trilogy project, start with shorts and, and start build up building a world to the point where people are craving book length or craving trilogies. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have, um, have a question or comments or? experiences. I, I will, I'll say one more thing and then I'll, I'll let someone else talk. I had a real mental shift though, as, as you were going through your presentation, because for me, it's like, I'm never going to do that because I don't want to ask people for money. And it'd be so embarrassing if the project failed. And, and I don't know if I would do the follow through. So I'm not going to start something because of course, Brandy said this in the, 
in the chat, once you do it, you have got to fulfill those promises. And then that would be overwhelming and there'd be the way to that. But but you said that when you shifted it to like comparing it to Amazon and I started thinking, oh, this isn't really so much about raising money. It's another platform to sell books. I mean, that really just like, oh, oh, okay. Like pre-sales. Yeah. I mean, that was like, maybe, maybe I should give this some more thought and not be so like, no, I can't do it. <laughs> I just I kept say thinking it's, it's hard for a traditional author to use this. Yeah. 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 You know, I just you kept gotta, thinking the whole time. Publisher on board for your that, whole life. You know? Well, it, it could take up your whole life. Yeah, I mean, really, it would be I mean, a, really you think about like thing. all the other like, OK, so if I'm going to do this for food fight. Does that mean I can't, you know, I to do it well and to do it right, you have to stop everything else you're doing. So I'm like, I've got a novel to finish and I've got mm-hmm. I know another short story that's going to be due in the fall. And so it's like you really have to choose. You have to choose. True what you're super passionate about, what you really want to focus most of your writing energy on. But to do a campaign successfully can really jumpstart your career. Yeah. Right. Right. It was, this was great. This was yeah, this was terrific information. I mean, just so much. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, anyone else be- before we, you, it was so comprehensive too. I mean, that was, it was just like, yeah. oh, great. Well, Hope, thank you. Um, you know, we we loved having you the last time when you were here talking about grants and funding. So if you're watching this and, or, you know, you're here and you've not seen that episode, I urge you to go back onto our I'll website. Watch it. And, mm-hmm. Yes, and, and watch it. It was fantastic. And we're so thankful to have you back again to talk about this topic, which we've never had anyone talk about on, on Writer's Chat. So thank you just so, so much for sharing your yeah. knowledge and expertise with us. This has just been terrific. Um, next week, we will have Tracy Crump with us. And many of you are familiar with Tracy. She is like one of the best chicken soup for the soul contributors ever. I think she's been published in like 24 or something of those, um, th- of those different anthologies. And as you probably know, that is pretty cool because they are hard to get into. It's very competitive market. But she also talks at writers conferences and different things. And she's talked to us before about writing query letters and cover letters. So she's going to come back to talk about that next week. Um, if you're watching the replay, we invite you to join us any Tuesday morning, just about um, at 11 o'clock Eastern, 10 o'clock Central. We're almost always here except for around the holidays. And um, we invite you to join our Facebook group, Writers Chat, or check out our Writers Chat Facebook page where you can see all the episodes that we do that go back years now so this is this has been really fun and those of you are here thank you so much we just appreciate you showing up with us and and being part of it stay around for the after party um other than that bye everybody and hope thanks again so so much